Hey, how are you? This is Pastor Kent with you, and we're continuing our series on our Bible study on Genesis. We're looking at the second and third day today. Eva, thank you for being here with us. May I be your instrument and do and say what you want me to, and say in Yeshua's name, amen. We looked at the first day um, we're going to look at the second and the third today today so um, God said we're going from verses 6 to 13 um, God said let there be a dome in the middle of the water let it divide the water from the water and God made the dome and divided the water under the dome from the water above the dome. That is how it was. And God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. God said, let there be the water under the sky gather together in one place and let dry land appear and that is was how it was god called the dry land earth and gathered together of the water he called seas and god saw that it was good god said let the earth put forth grass produce seed and plants and fruit trees, each yielding its own kind of seed bearing fruit on the earth, and that it is how it was. The earth brought forth grass, plants, and yielding its own kind of seed, and the seeds each producing its own kind of seed bearing fruit. And God saw that it was good, so that there was Eve in the morning, the third day. May God bless the reading of his word. So, as we see, we're going from the third part of the first day to the third day. So, verses 3 to 5 are about this. Here we have a further account of the first day's work. Observe, the first of the visible beings which God created was light. So the light is a living thing. The light is our Messiah. That is the light of the world. So make no mistake. Not that by himself, see, it says himself, not itself, which means it's a person meant to see the work. For the darkness and the light, both alike to him, so they both looked alike. But by the might, see the works of the glory in them, the might work of the works, while it was day. The works of Satan and his servants are works of darkness. But he that doeth truth and doeth good cometh to the light, cometh to the Messiah, cometh to Yeshua, Yeshua, okay? And cometh, covereth it, that his deeds may be made manifest. So by his blood we are healed. Um, light is the great beauty and blessing of the universe like the firstborn it does of all the visions being must resemble the great parent in purity and power blessings and benefits beneficent sorry beneficence it is great 
affinity with the spirit and its next to it though by it we see the other things and are sure that it is yet we know not its nature nor can describe what it is or by what way the light is parted by the sight of it let us be led and a stain in in the believing completion of him of the light in the new creation this is talking about the new earth the first thing wrought in souls is light the blessing spirit captives the will of affections and the ever lighting the understanding so cometh into the heart by the door this is the door in our heart it is the good shepherd whose own the sheep are like sin and Satan so sin and Satan are one like thieves and robbers climb up some other way those that sin are darkness by grace become light in the world again referring to the Messiah the light was made by the word of God's power so he spoke Jesus our Messiah into existence he said let there be light be willing and appointed it and it was done immediately there was light such a copy as done reality effectually for the purification purity not to show only to the serve present for the command for he commanded it and it stood fast with him it was de decum fashion a word and a world so this means that this world belongs to who us as his creation that the light was made by the word of God's power he said let there be light be willing and appointed it and it was done immediately there was light such a copy as spectral answers the original idea of the eternal mind so are you understanding this that we have actually an eternal mind it never shuts off so oh the power of the Word of God he spoke and it was done done really effectually and perpetually not in showing only and to serve as present true for he commanded and it stood fast with him that was dictum and fashion a word and a world the word world of God is is his will and the good produced for him was light and he is the light the light of the world the divine light which shines sufficiently souls and sanctifying souls is raw wrought by the power of God the power of his word and the spirit of wisdom and relation open the understanding scattering the
the mist of the ignorance and mistakes. So everything is erased. And giving the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ as at first. God commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. So oh, glory, praise Jesus, hallelujah. Darkness would have been puerility upon the face of the fallen man if the Son of God had not come and given us an understanding. The light which God willing willed when it was produced, he approved of God saw that the light that it was good. It was exactly as he designed it, and it was fit to answer the end of which is designed it. It was useful, profitable, the world which now is place would have been a dungeon without it. It is admirable and pleasant. Truly, the light is sweet. It rejoices in the heart. What God commands, he will approve and graciously accept. He will be pleased with the work of his own hands. That it is God indeed will approve the graciously accept. He will be willing, he will be well pleased with the work of his own hands, and it is good indeed which is in the sight of God. For he sees not as men sees. If the light is good, how good is it that the fortune of the light from whom we receive it, and whom we owe all praise for it, and all services we do by it. So, this is talking about how we use our Messiah to benefit those that are lost. And we can claim the power of our Messiah and heal the sick and raise the dead, make the blind to see, the lame to walk, the mute to speak, the deaf to hear, the sin and sickness, the disease of cancer and TB and all AIDS and syphilis and HIV and all those can all go, okay? We have that power. We can, through our Messiah, do the same thing he did. That God divided the light from the darkness so he put a sender, and that they could never be joined together or rekindled for the fellowship of the light with darkness. And yet he divided the time between them and the dark of the light and the night of darkness. It is constant and regular succession for each other through the darkness was now scattered by the light. Yet it was not commanded to the partable banishment, but takes its turn in the light and has its place just because it has its own use. For the light of the morning be friends of business for the day, so the shadows of being befriended the response of night and draw the curtains about us, and we may sleep the bitter. God has thus divided time, light, and darkness, because he would daily remember that this is the word of mixtures and changes. In heaven there is perfect and perfectible light. No darkness at all. In hell, utter darkness and no gleam of light. In that world between those two, 
there is a great gulf fixed. This is referring to purgatory, but in this world they are counter-changed and we pass daily from one to another. And we may learn to expect that like visual visual tudes and pronounced of God, peace and trouble, joy and sorrow, and may set the one over against the other, accommodating ourselves both as we do the light and the darkness, bidding both welcome and making me make him the best of both. That God divided them from each other, distinguished names he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. He gave them names as the Lord of both. For the day is his, the night also his. Swallowed up by the ocean of eternity. Let us acknowledge God is constant succession of day and night and swallowed up in the ocean of eternity let us acknowledge God is constant consent both to his honor by working for him day after day and resting in him at night the meditation in this constant Law, day and night that is that this was the first day's work and a day's work is good the eve and the morning were the first day the darkness of the evening was before the light of the morning that it might serve the for a fowl a foal to it to set off and making it shine brighter this was the only first day of the world but the first day of the week I observe the honor of the day because of the new world beginning of the first of the week likewise in the restitution of Christ and the light of the day early in the morning in him the day spring from on high has visited the world and happy we are we for every happy if the day day star arises in our hearts you need to understand this okay that the devil goes about as a roaring lion, consuming and devouring whomever he chooses. <coughs> but we, we, as true messianic, apostol, apostol, have that ability to resist the devil through our Lord and Savior. We have here an account of the second day's work, the creation of the firmation in which the commandment of God concerning it, let there be a firmament, an expansion. So the Hebrew word signifies like a sheet spread or contained, drawn out. This includes all that was visible above the earth, between it and the third heavens. The air is higher, middle and lower regions. The celestial globe and all the spheres and orbs of light above, it reaches as high as the place where the stars are fixed for it is called the firmament of heaven and as low as the place of the birds fly 
for it is also called the firmament of heaven. When God made the light, he appointed the earth to be perceptible and vehicle of, be of its beams to be as a medium of communication between the visible or between the invisible and visible worlds for both between heaven and earth <coughs> there is an inconstable distance yet there is not an impossibility gulf as there is between heaven and hell this firmament is not a wall or proportion <coughs> but a way of intercourse the ads and God made the firmament and God requires us he himself works in us or it is not done he that may have all the praise Lord give what thou commandest and then command what thou pleasest my place I gotta find it again oh. as there is between heaven and earth heaven and hell this firmament is not a wall of proportion partition partition but a way of intercourse. The creation of it. Blessed it should seem if God only commanded it to be done. So some one else had done it. He adds, and God made the firmament. What God requires us, for he himself works in us. Or it is not done. He that commands faith, holiness, and love creates them by the power of his grace, going along with his word, that he may have all the praises. Lord, give that thou commandest, and then command what thou pleasest. The firmament is said to be the work of God's fingers through the vastness and its extent declares it to be the work of his arm stretched out yet the armable fitness of the Constitution shows that it's a curious piece of art the work of his fingers the use and design of it to divide the waters from the heavens it is to distinguish between the waters that are wrapped up in the clouds and those that cover the sea the waters in the air and those in the earth see the difference between the two carefully observed or Canaan is upon this account <coughs> preferred to Egypt that Egypt was molested and made fruitful with the waters that are under the firmament
but Canaan with the waters above and the firmament even the dew of heaven which trenteth not for the souls of men God has in the firmament his powers chambers store chambers hence he warmeth the earth and water the earth he also treasures or magazines of the snow and hail which he hath received against the day of the battle of war oh that the great god is he who has thus provided for the comfort of all that serve him in the confusion of all that hate him it is good having him on our friend and bad having him as an enemy the naming it he called the firmament heaven it is a visible heaven the preventative of the holy city of our enemy the naming of it he called the firmament heaven in the visible heaven in the heavens the heavens thereof are said rule it is not God in the height of heaven he is we should be led by the completation of the heavens that are on the eye of the consider of our father who is in heaven the height of the heavens should remain us of God's supremacy in the infinite distance that is between him and us brightness of the heavens and their purity should remind us of glory and majesty and perfect holiness the vastness of heavens the encompassing of the earth and the influence they have upon it should remind us of the immersion and universal providence so as you see our father made this for us and gave us this way and this will that was the second day the third day's work is related to these verses <coughs> verses 19 to 13 The firmament of the sea and the dry land and the making of the earth fruitful here at all the power of the Creator had been exonterated and employed about the upper part of the visible world the light of heaven was kindled from the firmament of heaven fixed but he decreed decides the lower world the earth which was designed of the children of men designed both for their habitation and for their maintenance and here we have an account of the fitting of it for both and the building of their house and the second of their table how the earth was prepared to be habitated by men for men by gathering of the waters together and the making of the dry land to appear thus 
instead of confusing with which there was. When the earth and water were mixed on one great mass, behold, now there is order by such separation and reverent them both useful. God said, let it be so, and it was. No sooner said than done. The waters which had covered the earth were covered to retreat, to gather into one place, namely the hollows which were filled by the appointed of their reputation and the rest. The waters thus cleared, thus collected, and thus lodged in their proper appointed of their reputation and rest the waters thus cleared thus collected and thus lodged in place as he called seas through they are many in distant regions was washed several shores yet there above the ground and under the ground they have communicated with each other so they are one and the common receptacle of the waters into which the waters flow waters of the sea often in spirit sanctifying troubles and affections God owns people not to experiment from those in the world, but is their comfort that they are only waters under the heaven. There are none in heaven, and that they are all in the place that God appointed them, and within the bonds of he set for them. How? the waters were gathered together at first, and how they stood bound and limited by the Almighty had that first confined them, all elegantly described, and there mentioned as a matter of praise, those go down to the sea in ships ought to acknowledge daily the wisdom, power, and, jet, and goodness of the Creator in making the great watchers serviceable to man for trade and commerce, er, er, com, commissary. And those that tardy at home must own themselves inhabitate to him that keeps the sea and the bars and the doors in his decree place and stays his poor waves the dry land was made to appear and immerse out of the waters and was called earth and given to the children of men the earth it seems was being before but it was no use because it was under the water thus many of god's gifts are received in vain because they are buried make them appear and they become serviceable we who to this day enjoy the benefit of dry land must own ourselves tenants to do and depends upon what God do those hands formed the dry land how the earth was finished the maintenance and support of men present provision was now made by the imitating products of 
the upstart earth, which in obedience to God's command was no sooner made than it became fruitful and brought forth grass for the cattle and herb of the service of men. Provision was likewise made for time to come, and preparation for the sensual or the several kinds of vegetables which are numerous, various, and all create curious. <coughs> And every one have its seed, itself after its kind. That during the commentation, the com commencements of men upon the earth, food might be fetched out of the earth for his use and benefit. Lord, what is the man that it is thus visited and regulated? that such care should be taken and such provision made for the support and preservation of those guilty of obnoxious lives which have been a thousand times fortified that the only one the earth of the Lord's, but the fullness thereof. And he is rightful owner and sovereign deserver, not only of it, but of all its furniture. The earth was emptiness, but now, by a word's speaking, it has become full of God's riches and his they are still his corn and his wine his wool and his flax they must be used the common providence is continued creation and in it our father worketh here too, the earth still remains under the efficiency of his command to bring forth grass and herbs and annual products. And though being according to the common course of nature, those are not standing miracles, yet they are standing instances of unwavered power and unexhausted <coughs> of the world's great maker and master that thou God according what makes the use of agency of second choice, second causes, according to their nature, yet he neither needs them nor is tri tired of them. For thou, the precious fruits of earth, is usually brought forth by the profitable ripe fruit. Before the sun and the moon were made, it is good to provide things necessary before we have occasion to use them. Before the beasts of men were made, here were grass and herbs prepared for them. God thus dwelt wisely and graciously with man. Let not men then be foolish and unwise of himself that God must have the glory of all benefit we receive from the products of the earth, either from the earth, from food, or physical. It is he that hears the heavens 
and the glory of all benefit to receive from the products of the earth, either from food or physical. It is he in him who is the foundation. When the streams are dried up and the fig tree doeth not blossom, we may receive and rejoice in him. <coughs> Why do we doubt what God has for us? Why do we say that you know, we don't know? Um, you know, when we do? Why do we look and say, God is not in us? You know, let us not be with him, but thus he is with us. He is part of us, and he does own us. So why do we doubt what he has set for us in this world. You know, you may think that you're not important. You may think that you're not worthy. Well, I assure you, you are. Because God, our salvation, our Savior, our Lord, does not make mistakes. He does not make garbage. He does not make foul, disgusting stuff. You know? When you see somebody in the world messing up, do you talk to them? Or do you ridicule, mock, and make fun of them? You know, it, it's a warning to us that we need to understand what is going on here and how gracious our salvation should be to us our creator made us a place where we can see True love divine and true belief in a world that we can't see. Now, let me tell you that our God does do what he says he's going to do. Tomorrow, we will look at um, the fourth day, and maybe the fifth day, we'll see. May God bless you and keep you. Abba, thank you for being here with us. Bless and guide and strengthen and keep us as we go in your separate ways. We say these things in your name. Amen.